Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical CEO, and today we're gonna to talk about how to deal with an active shooter, okay? And there's a lot of misinformation out there uh, around a lot of the subjects that I discuss, and this is another one of those subjects. We have now started here at Bone Tactical a new playlist called The Tactical Brief, all right? It's gonna be a tactical brief with myself. There is a good possibility that we'll be doing tactical briefs with some guest speakers and some guests to the channel in the near future. But this is Tactical Brief with me, Mr. Bone, and this tactical brief is on how to deal with an active shooter. Now, there's three basic topics and subsections of this topic, if you will, that I'm gonna cover in this video. And those three subtopics are one, don't be a hero or what that basically means is don't get more people killed. So being a hero will definitely in this situation get more people killed than already could potentially be killed in an active shooter situation. So that's what you definitely don't wanna do is you don't wanna get more people killed. The second subtopic is what bag to pack, all right? Or to pack a bag, all right? So the, the second subtopic is packing a bag or having a bag prepared. And the third subtopic is the actual real how to deal portion and the tactics portion. So the how to deal with an active shooter is how to defeat and effectively win in that situation. And that's with surprise, violence of action and precision. So the element of surprise and the element of precision are so incredibly important during an active shooter situation. We will discuss that in detail. And I've got to say that those two go hand in hand, the not being a hero, because if you are not really squared away, well-trained, experienced, and ready to deal with an active shooter, don't even try it. Don't even think about it, okay? You guys know 100% if you're ready, Okay, if you're squared away, if you're trained and experienced, then you are. If you're not, guys, just don't try and deal with it because it's very likely that you are going to get more people killed. But I'm gonna discuss this option, this having a bag option. This is the Gray Man Operations Pack from Bone Tactical. All right, www.bonetactical.com. And it is a great pack that doesn't give away anything about you. you the, so the first thing that I will mention is you do wanna have the bag packed in a, in a way that just looks like a normal commuter bag of some sort. This is a backpack, easy to carry, really heavy duty, well built, and allows you to carry this anywhere without people thinking, oh man, look, he's got a firearm, okay? So that's kind of what you're really trying to go for there. So the bag is definitely a consideration. Grab a good bag. This bag I have packed with a bunch of bug out survival gear that's all also available from www.bonetactical.com. I have added some extra stuff. All of this stuff that you see here, I'm not gonna get into detail on. It's all available from bonetactical.com. I keep a pair of shooting glasses, all right, ballistic lens glasses in the bag. I keep earring, hearing protection, ear protection in the bag, all right? <clears throat> when I say precision, I really mean precision, okay? And the reason that I say precision is so important is because consider the situation of an active shooter. First of all, surprise and precision are the two, are the two crucial, crucial things in an active shooter situation because you've got a person, 99% of the time it's a guy, you've, so you've got a guy performing an act of terror, whether he was bullied in high school or whether he's a Muslim, all right, those are the, also the, the, the leading uh, mentally unstable people that are religious fanatics of the Muslim type. Of, it's just a religion that's, uh, that's very hate-driven religion. Okay, we're gonna keep it real here. And the religious fanatics of the Muslim faith are, uh, they're called in the Quran, death to infidels. The rest of us are infidels. So it's a religion that calls for murdering of innocent people and Christians like myself. Let's keep it real and keep it honest. So those are people that you're gonna be dealing with. They're militant people. The other type of person is the mentally unstable, often American, uh, 
younger guy that has hadn't grown up with an attitude of entitlement his whole life and really just snaps, breaks, uh, the parents cut off the credit card and he goes on a killing spree type thing. So it's a very sad, very sad byproduct of the attitude of entitlement that we have in America today. But I will talk with you about how to fix that, how to, how to deal with that situation, how to handle that situation, if you will. And now that we've put ourselves in the mindset of what type of person that is, surprise and precision are so important because that person is prepared in their mind for that role as a combatant. They are a combatant. They have a firearm that's an active shooter situation, so they've got a firearm. They may have tons of rounds of ammo. They may have a bulletproof vest as well. Uh, they may have a, a bomb vest, an explosive vest, any of these things. So surprise is so important because any type of a combative role surprises the element that allows you to have that advantage and to be able to take that person out without them being prepared or to take defensive actions, to take a hostage, things of that nature, a hostage to be able to adapt their situation to fight against you. So the reason that I say precision is so important, those of you guys that carry a small nine millimeter firearm, the more you lose the element of surprise, if they know you're coming, if they see your gun, that gives them time to claim a hostage, a hostage, then you have to deal with being able to shoot a person in, you know, this area here, uh, core area, then you have to go from, from the core of the body, then you have to go to a T-zone shot, then they might even be, then they might even be moving a, a hostage, an innocent person in front of them. You have to consider what's behind them. You have to consider what's in front of them. You have to consider all of these things, your abilities as a shooter. Well, this I got from my buddy over at Zahal Org. So it's, uh, it, you know, the, the Glock just pops in here. It's, uh, it's, it's not a, this, is, this is in and of itself not a firearm. I'm not going to show the firearm in this video because I don't have to and because you guys understand what a firearm is and because YouTube uh, gives different rating systems to this video. If I don't show a firearm in the video, then YouTube is more likely to uh, allow this video to be shown, okay? It's the, it's the world we live in now. So that's, that's the way we have to do things. If the video doesn't have to have a firearm, it won't. So this, the Glock, snaps into here. Why, why is that important? Well, what it allows me to do is it allows me to steady that firearm. Now the firearm becomes a much more stable platform. And then the sight, the, the, the basically red dot sight uh, gives me the opportunity to now really become more accurate because it's more stable. I can have both eyes open. I can see everything that's going on and I can very easily just pick up that red dot that's in there or a green dot or whatever and then just put it over the target and it's much easier to do all right i've got backup sights of course in case this goes out uh, if i'm a very good shooter i don't need any of that stuff i can just shoot by intuition because you know that's very uh, possible i've got the light on there if it's if it's a building and they've cut the electricity and i need to do room clearing uh, you know, another stabilization device, so I'm very stable. Stability is key. When I say precision, that's what I mean. So those of you guys that are carrying a small pistol, unless you're a great shooter, it's gonna be loads more difficult. In that situation, you'll definitely want to maintain your element of surprise as much as possible. If you've got a concealed firearm, don't show that firearm until the last ultimate minute. That's why we practice drawing and shooting from the draw because it's concealed carry and that person that you, that active shooter doesn't know you have a gun until you show them that gun. So in all, in all uh, chances and in all possibilities, don't show them that you have a firearm until you're ready to shoot. All right. So surprise, element of surprise. I, another thing I do have in the bag is my plate carrier set up. I've got one, two, three, four, five extra magazines. All right, for the for the pistol that is my everyday carry pistol right now, and I've got two more magazines here because I'm always carrying those. So I've got 
a magazine and a pistol, so that's five, six, seven, eight magazines, which is, I did a video as well on talking about how many mags to carry. Eight's kind of my magic number of magazines to be able to access. Because in my experience, if you ever go through more than eight magazines, you're in a real world of trouble. Okay, if, you, if you've got a problem you can't solve with eight magazines, you have got a, you're, you are in trouble, buddy. And a uh, and hundred magazines may not help you after that because that's a lot of ammo to put down range. And uh, yeah, it, it can happen very easily. Eight magazines is nothing, but it's, it's, a, it's kind of a J curve. Okay, so, you know, one or two magazines is most things are handled very quickly like that uh, with not, not necessarily the magazines, but the rounds. Okay, two or three rounds are all that even, you know, people that are highly trained, what we consider highly trained, like police officers, they're only putting two or three rounds on target when they empty all of their magazines statistically. So if you are a really squared away guy and you're a good shooter and you know how to use those rounds and you put your rounds on target, then if you've got 150 rounds with you, let's just throw a number out there, 100 rounds, 150 rounds, and you can make every one of them count, that's a ton of ammo. But okay, we won't get into a whole lot of that. I've got a plate carrier in here. It's a minimalist plate carrier. I, I have another tactical brief video coming soon or already published, but I've, I'm filming another tactical brief video around this time about plate carriers. So we, we will be sure to check out the plate carrier video discussing plate carriers. Plate carriers, you're not a knight, okay? It's not a full suit of armor. They are for a very specific purpose. They're not to keep you from getting shot. They're not to keep you from getting killed. They're not to protect your whole entire body. They are basically to maybe protect your vital organs, maybe depending on the angle. And they are mostly in my opinion for real estate space. So now I've got a little bit of extra real estate. My magazines are easier and faster to access and I maybe can take a bullet. But another thing that I can do is I can put that on a, a person in that active shooter situation. I can put that vest on an innocent person in the situation where I've gone through my magazines or in the situation where the, the combatant is down and I don't know if there's another combatant, all right, I can, I can put that vest on another person. It's a possibility of having that vest, but it's not, I'm not wearing that vest to protect myself against the active shooter necessarily, because remember, it's a surprise and concealment situation. The more, if I spend a bunch of time engaging that person in combat, then other innocent people are dying. If I'm, do, if I'm in a shootout, then innocent people are dying, that I'm putting other people's innocent lives in, in jeopardy. And, and that's, what I, that's exactly what I don't wanna do. <clears throat> when I am wearing a plate carrier, a great thing to wear is, and this was popularized a long time ago, before my time by special forces guys uh, in, I believe it was Vietnam era around then, the, the Green Berets started wearing fanny packs under their plate carriers, just because the plate carrier gives this great amount of chest space and, and access to gear to that center line and, and really great. And then now what do we have right below is another area that's not being utilized. So we can use a fanny pack below the plate carrier because the plate carrier doesn't go all the way down because you want to keep mobility. So then having two separate pieces is just great. You maintain your mobility. This is one level higher. Okay. It allows you to be completely concealed. There's it's plastic and nylon almost no metal in the construction. You can pass through a metal detector. It won't trigger the metal detector. So, and since it's very thin, okay, and fits the pelvic region, if I, if I am going concealed, I can quickly tuck it under my clothing and I can now have a concealed stash that nobody knows about. And remember surprise, the element of surprise is everything. So I do want to have that ability to be wearing this under my clothing if I have some ID documents, a stash that's deep cover, okay? A deep cover thing. And then I can quickly pull it out and stick some extra magazines in there, whatever, and have it on the outside if I do have to go into that really heavy roll, all right? The, these are not available yet. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show, I'm showing this kind of just to show you guys. This is, these are just super cool. They now have the, the bone tactical lettering on the, on the webbing here. Uh, it's really, really cool. And then there's very low profile, just beautiful, you know, calfskin leather is the, is, is, and then quarter on the inside, super heavy duty YKK zipper, plastic marine grade zipper, just built for life. 
and uh, and really heavy duty awesome. You can even use this to carry your firearm with gym shorts or anything because the belt's so heavy duty, nylon webbing. So <clears throat> the, finally in the bag, I, I do have, you know, just some, some, I have some everyday vitamins and stuff that I might take in here, different uh, things that are specific to me. All right, uh, a multi-tool, a flashlight, business cards, protein bars, uh, face masks, stuff like that. If I don't want, if I want to keep my identity protected, I've got the rest of the bug out bag stuff that comes with the with the bone tactical bug out bag, the the headlamp and all this stuff. Okay, I've got some insect repellent in here. I'm actually out here in the at our jungle uh, training facility, so I'll, I'm gonna spray a little bit of this bug spray on uh, while I'm while I just pulled it out and I'm thinking about it. But that's kind of the gist of the of the bug out bag and the the idea behind the training principles and the idea of how to deal with an active shooter. So I will finish with the, the don't be a hero. What does that mean? More specifically, it means that if you're not prepared to deal with an active shooter, don't try and deal with an active shooter. If you wanna be prepared to deal with an active shooter, start training and then get to the point where you, where you know that you can, that you're prepared with a bag and with a kit and with the equipment that you need, that you have the training and the ability and the mindset that you can approach that active shooter without being noticed and that you can put rounds on target without those rounds going through the active shooter and hurting any innocent bystanders, without those rounds hitting any innocent bystanders or doing any damage on the way in, okay? And then that you can cancel that threat, that you have a good enough tactical awareness that you can recognize how many active shooters there are, how many people are cooperating together, and that you can do all that without yourself being noticed as a combatant. Okay, and the way that you do that, the way that you remain with that element of surprise is gray man theory. All right, I have the information wealth uh, video series of, on gray man theory that's the, the top informational series out there. It's 100% free, believe it or not, and it's here on YouTube. It's a, it's, a, it's a wealth of information that you can't find anywhere else. Gray man theory playlist, the gray man theory bag, find out what that actually means, the gray man theory stuff, and uh, and it's here for, for free and it's here for you. And if you wanna be prepared, that's the way to do it. And that's the best way to do it. It may not be the only way to do it. You can, you can learn the way I learned and, and throwing yourself in these dangerous situations in dangerous parts of the world uh, and, and surviving by the skin of your teeth and, and with, with the grace of God and, and a little bit of luck and, uh, and leave with the skill set. Or you can, you can learn from somebody who's been there, done that. Comments and questions below, guys. Please let me know if you want to keep these videos coming, if you want me to keep them coming, if you like them, uh, because, you know, hey, I do this stuff at request. This was a requested video. Somebody commented, hey, Bone, can you talk about how to deal with an active shooter? And yes, I will. If you'd like me to go into further detail about doing some shooting and showing you how to deal with an active shooter, I will do more videos like that. I did, I have a, a multiple, it's at least two, two or three, videos where I took you guys through to my shoot house that's over here on another property, but here close. And uh, it's, a, it's a shoot house where we walked through and I showed you guys in one of the rooms is a hostage room where there's a hostage target or there's a, a no shoot target and then another target that you have to shoot behind and it's a T-zone shots only count. So that's one of the ways that you train train for hostage situations, for active shooter situations, and then you actually have to train your gray man skills too. So basically, basically get into all that stuff. Comment if you want to see those videos, if you wanna see more actual hands-on shooting videos. If you like the tactical briefs and you prefer the discussional videos, this is a tactical brief. If you love this series, let me know you love it. If you wanna see the shooting, let me know you wanna see the shooting. Your questions and comments are the only way that I can keep this channel going. If you guys don't support me, then I can't keep doing this stuff and I've got to go do other stuff to make money. All right, so thanks for watching and your support is always appreciated. Bone out. If you like these awesome videos and you want to be notified when I post more, then you need to go to my channel homepage on YouTube. You need to click the subscribe button, but not only that, then you have to go over here to the bell. You got to click the bell and then you click all. If you don't do that, YouTube won't notify you when I'm putting up this awesome new content.